shout, shout, hallelujah. The same God that have kept you here, that will keep you to the end. You will never see evil anymore. 2019 shall be a walkover year for you. In Jesus' excellent name. Please, you may be seated for a moment. In due time. How many of us had those outstanding testimonies again this service? God has shown himself strong on our behalf. He has never left us without the witness. Deliverances, healings, preservations, miracle visas, release, marriages, delivery of twins. <laughs> Even when one said, the devil said one will not leave, God still intervened. And the baby cried. Today, two of them are alive and healthy. To God, they alone be all the glory. For all these testimonies and many more that are not shared, why not rise on your feet? Let's thank God. The caller is the doer, the call is not the doer. Let's give him thanks. Let's appreciate him, the doer of these great testimonies. Father, we thank you. We we'll glorify you. We exalt you, we magnify you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for bringing us to 2019. Thank you for answers, preservations, restoration of life, open door, miracle marriages, and confirmation of your world. Thank you for insanity being healed. Lord, we thank you. You have done all things well. You have done all things well. You have done all things well. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Coming to your presence because we know you will help us. Father, help us again. Answer questions in our heart. Let no one return confused and ashamed. Give direction to everyone. Let your word come on and threaten and give answers to the questions of our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I have dominion. Congratulations. God has spoken concerning us this month, and His word to us is prayer and fasting.
fasting facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. Prayer and fasting facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. And by the grace of God, in the first service today, we began a serious teaching that we run in all our Sunday services, engaging the power of prayer and fasting for dominion. We saw part 1A in the first service, we are going to be building up in the second service, in part 1B, engaging the power of prayer and fasting for dominion. I encourage you to please get the teaching of the first service. Do everything within your power to get the teaching of the first service because it was foundation laying. Please come with me in this service to Psalm 110, Psalm 110, 1 to 3. Psalm 110, 1 to 3. I take my text from there. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. This will be your testimony from now. You will begin to rule in the midst of thy enemies. The Lord God of heaven will make your full stool to be upon your enemies. You know what that means? You are in charge. You are in control. That's dominion. People will be willing to help you. Help us will rise to help you. Things will begin to obey you. In the name of Jesus. From the scripture we read, it just simply implies that the end time church is a church of dominion a church of power, a church of success. Micah chapter 4, 1 to 2. On the last day, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established above all the mountains. It shall be exalted above all the hills. And all nations shall flow into it. <laughs> and one nation shall come to another and say, let us go to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths. Out of Zion shall proceed the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, the end time church is a church of attraction. And one of the things that makes the church a church of attraction is dominion. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy foe soul. From this year 2019, your enemies will become your foe soul. God will send the rod of his strength, the rod of his word, the rod of his power, the rod of his name, the rod of authority out of Zion for you and I. And you begin to rule. You begin to reign. Hear me. Whatsoever has been intimidating you before now, from now you begin to intimidate them. Your reigning in life has just started. Hear me, you'll be celebrated though. Some of us were going to die as an institution. People will begin to look for you to ask, how are you doing it? But you see, you cannot rule in the midst of your enemies without power. It's not possible. If you must rule with your position in place and you are still ruling, if you must rule in the midst of your enemies, then you must have power because it takes power to be in dominion. Somebody may be asking, what is dominion? We'll try to define that in the first service. Let's see other definitions in this service. What is dominion? Dominion simply means having authority from on high to reign in life. 
having authority from on high to reign in life. Mark 11, 28 to 30. And say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave, thee, who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Remember, as the Father has sent, him, he has sent us, I will also ask you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. They couldn't answer. <laughs> Your testimonies from now will confound the wise. Yeah. Revelation 5, 9 to 10. And then sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seas thereof. For thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, out of every and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We shall do what? We shall do what? What will you do here from now? You will reign on the earth. You will not reign in heaven, no. If you are waiting for the day you reign in heaven, they may cast you out like Lucifer. You better reign here. Help me tell you, never better reign here. God has given us the opportunity to be in dominion and to reign on the earth here. From every tongue. So it doesn't matter where you come from. Your village may not be in the map. It doesn't matter. From every nation. From every people. He has redeemed us unto our God to be kings. So you are not a peasant. You are a king. You are a queen. That's why you must carry yourself that way. Don't carry yourself as a nobody. You are somebody. You are a king. Live like a king. Eat like a king. Walk like a king. <laughs> Speak like a king. He has redeemed us to be kings and priests that we may reign on the earth. Kings to reign. Priests to care. So dominion is having authority from on high to reign. We have the authority from on high to reign. We are being redeemed to reign. We are not being redeemed to be reduced. What is dominion? Number two. Being in charge in all realms and spheres of life by operating with irresistible light that darkness cannot comprehend. Being in charge in all realms and spheres of life. You know, the Bible says the nobles, the governors shall come from the midst of them. A time is coming when people will be looking for houses. They will be waiting here for us to finish service because all the landlords are inside church. When they are looking for jobs, looking for promotion, they say, Oh God, is they there? Do it. Are you getting what I'm talking? Can you see what I'm seeing? <laughs> and it's you the Bible is talking about. So don't look down on yourself. So we see captains of industries, employers of labor, leaders of thought coming from this church. The nobles shall come from them. Being in charge in all realms and space of life by operating with irresistible light that darkness cannot comprehend. John 1. 4 and 5. The Bible said, In him was the light. And the light was the light of all men. And this light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 9. For this is the true light 
that lighted all men that came to the earth. So every man is lightable by this light, including you and I. The true light. This is the light that shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended in all. You agree with me that the dominion of light over darkness is unquestionable irresistible if you like try this aside please this night try it if there's no light in the house when they bring light you discover darkness with vamos will disappear without any meeting without any excuse darkness will never take excuse to leave when light comes that dominion and that's how it will be in your appearance at your appearance from now the devil will excuse himself where others fail, you step in there, you will succeed. Where the thing, things cannot work, you enter there, things will begin to work. When they say nothing good can come out of you, you go there, something good will begin to come out. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All you need is light to dominate any form of darkness. Don't tell me I'm not an indigent. That's why things are not working for me. It's not true. Joseph was not an indigent. But by light he had. The constitution of Egypt was changed. The whole synod sat and said we must change our law. A slave will rule us from now. And Joseph was accommodated in Egypt. He became a prime minister in a strange land. Why? He had a working, a working idea. He saved the whole Egypt from famine. When you have the light, you will be in charge. Pharaoh said in Genesis 41, 38 to 44, In as much as there is no one as wise and as discreet as thou, you shall be in charge of this business. By your word shall the whole Egypt be ruled. Nobody will lift his head and set at your wall. A stranger, a slave, an ex convict. But because he was the one that God gave the revelation, the idea, the light, he was in charge. Hear me this year and beyond. God will give you ideas. He will give you lights. He will give you a direction that will put you in charge. Daniel was relevant in four administrations in Babylon. They couldn't push him aside because of the light he had. Therefore, I look forward to emergence of global leaders captains of industries solution providers many of us will be solving national problems and you will become a celebrity overnight because when you have the key you are in charge it is pertinent to state here pressure people of God that dominion cannot be exercised without power nobody can And for you to have power, it must be generated. Not only generated, it must be transmitted and sustained. And one way to make this happen is through prayer and fasting. Prayer and what? You want to be a man of power, a woman of power, you can't play with prayer and fasting. And without power, you can't have dominion. Many are easily overpowered because they lack empowerment. What fasting does is that fasting spiritually expedites answers to our prayers. It quickens answers to our prayers. It helps us to be in touch and in tune with heaven. You know, many of us are city people. But in the village, because of bushes and other things, in those days they used to put a television. You go and look for maybe bamboo tree or something to 
put the antenna. How many of us, some of us, some, we were not born that time, but you go and put the antenna somewhere with one very tall bamboo tree. And sometimes that time, maybe only NTA. <laughs> and NTA is working, you are not getting it. You know, you go and turn, you'll be turning the bamboo tree to be turning it so that you can get the thing clearly. Three of us. It's just like having a cassette player or you turn to radio, yeah. Sometimes you turn it. The thing is doing like as if rain is falling. You now find tune it so that you can get clear voice. Are you following me? What I'm, I'm trying to illustrate to you. Now, what fasting does, you know, prayer is like the tuning. You can tune it, but you are not getting it clearly. But when you add fasting to it, it is fine tuning. You can now get clearer voices, clearer vision, and all that. So fasting helps us to fine tune and explain that answers to prayers. And we have said that in the last days, the last days are days of prayer and fasting. Whether you like it or not, we're in the last days. Jesus already gone to be with the Father and he has left the ministry to the Holy Spirit who is inside you and I. And in Luke, in Mark chapter 2, Mark 2, 18 to 20, and the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and, and, the, and the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come, and these are the days, though, when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. And then shall they fast in those days. These are those days. Oh. See the same thing in Matthew 9, 14 to 15. These are the days. <laughs> so the last days are days of prayer and fasting. Every major prophecy, major prophetic agenda in the scriptures require prayer and fasting for delivery. Including the fulfillment of prophecy, which is what we desire. We are giving us, for instance, the, pro, uh, the personalized prophetic declaration for 2019. But nothing there will come to pass without prayer. That's why you join the intercessory guide to it, you begin to prophesy, you begin to pray it, you begin to war with them, and then they begin to come to pass. First Timothy 1 18. This child I commit to you, son Timothy, that according to the prophecy which went before on day, that thou might test war and good warfare. One of the ways to war, good warfare, is through prayer and fasting. Remember that this kind will never go out except by prayer and fasting. This kind. Matthew 17, 21. This kind goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. So this kind will never give you notice. This kind will never warn you. But when this kind comes, the only thing that will make it to go is by prayer and fasting. So anything that will resist the prophetic word from coming to pass in your life, anything that will resist your year from being dominion feed, I decree today by this prayer and fasting to be cleared out of the way. Please note also that the last days are days of vengeance. The days of vengeance. Not only are days of power, he said, rule in the midst of thy enemies. You rule with power in the midst of your enemies. Psalm 63, 1 to 2. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek him. My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longeth for thee. That's prayer and fasting. <laughs> to see thy glory and thy power as I have seen it in the sanctuary. So it's not only the days of power, it is also the days of vengeance. And vengeance is facilitated by prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. Vengeance is facilitated by prayer and fasting. Now look at this. 
Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Isaiah 63 verse 4 For the day of vengeance is in my heart And the year of my redeem is come These are the days of vengeance And you see Without vengeance the things written will not be fulfilled <laughs> Luke 21 verse 22 Without vengeance the things written will not be fulfilled And vengeance is provoked by prayers Somebody say how? Look at that opening scripture we read in Luke 18, 1 to 8. Jesus told the parable that men ought always to pray and not faint. So if you don't want to faint, pray. For there was in a city a man, an unjust judge, that feared no God or no man. But a widow came to him and said, No king, avenge me of my enemies. <laughs> the king said, get, get out. The woman continued by Putting up prayer of opportunity. Oh, king, I've made me of my enemies. The king said, Do I fear no God, no man? But because of the opportunity of this woman, because I'll continue coming, unless you weary me, I will avenge her of her enemies. And, and Jesus asked, Will God not avenge his own elects that cry to him day and night? In verse 8, he said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. How? This year, through this prayer and fasting, God will hear you speedily. Yeah. Nevertheless, he said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith? May Jesus find faith in you and I. Yeah. Now hear me. God said he will avenge you how? Speedily. For if you have been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask? If that king can avenge that widow, how much more will God avenge you and I? Therefore, as we fast and pray, I see vengeance upon your adversaries. Whatever has not allowed you to lift their head, God is going to cut them down. Every one of the Gentiles that have not allowed you to raise your head to become who God has created you to be. Every molestation in the day, in the night, every forces of misfortune, forces of delay, disappointment, I decree they shall be subdued. But you see, if you want your prayer to be answered, you must get your heart in tune with God. Your heart position is vital for your answers in prayers. Many pray they don't get answered because their heart is not involved. Proverbs 16 verse 1, the preparation of the heart and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Your heart position is vital. Your heart position is right up. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 And you shall seek me and find me When you shall search for me With all your heart How many of your heart? Is it half heartedly? All your heart Please Let your heart be in what You are doing Let your heart be in the prayer Let your heart be in the fasting some fast, but it's actually a hunger strike because they don't pray, their heart is not involved, they don't study the word of God. Any fasting you do without the word and prayer is no fast, it's hunger strike. You saved your food free of charge. It is prayer, heartfelt prayer, that gives value to fasting. The heartfelt prayer. Of the righteous making tremendous power available, which is dynamic in his working. The heart faith prayer. Any prayer you pray that's not from the heart cannot be answered by God. So your heart is vital. Your heart content in prayer is crucial. Invest your heart in whatever you are doing.
in this prayer and fasting season. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 30, 21. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? So when we start praying and fasting, God is looking out for those whose heart are engaged. For his eye goes through and for the whole heart, searching for those whose heart are perfect towards him. God is searching for those whose heart are engaged. It is your heart engagement that brings results in prayer. That's why some can pray. You ask them, what did you pray about? They don't know. Because their heart wasn't involved. Please, whatever you do this period, in this prayer and fasting, make sure your heart is involved. Don't be fasting and your heart is traveling somewhere. Don't be fasting and your heart is holding somebody in terms of offense. Unforgiveness. Because if you don't forgive others, if you hold somebody in your heart, God will hold you too. Forgive us our trespasses as we well forgive those who trespass against us. If you ought anything against anybody, before you start fasting, please go and clear it. Make sure your heart is free and in tune with God and with man. Paul said, Herein do I exercise myself to have an of a heart or conscience free of effects. Cut that's void of offense towards God and towards man. Acts 24, verse 16. So please do everything within your power. All that black book you've been keeping. All the people that didn't greet you or greeted you during Christmas or not, you are holding. He said, This year, go show them. Clear it. Let your heart be free. Let your heart be focused. Let your heart be spiritually in tune. Because to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be carnally minded is what? Death. In a short while, we're going to partake in the communion. The communion we are partaking today is going to strengthen us to run the race ahead of us. And it's important that we remind ourselves again what is in the communion. Remember, the Holy Communion is one of the mysteries packaged, among other things, for our total health and vitality. The Holy Communion is the food of angels. That's what angels eat in heaven. As a matter of fact, communion service is not only to be held on the earth here. In heaven, there will be communion service. Because one day Jesus said, I will not eat of this table with you again until I eat it with you in my father's kingdom, which means in heaven there will be communion service. Psalm 78 verse 25. He said, men did eat of angels' food. That's what they eat in heaven. And when you eat what angels eat, you will be like angels. And the angels of the Lord excel in strength. So when you eat this food, you enjoy strength. The strength coming from this table today will help you run the race ahead of you in 2019. Our Paul began to teach us, he said, as I have received from the Lord, it was by revelation. Paul never saw Jesus face to face. So it was by revelation. He said, as I received from the Lord, I showed to you. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 30. But the bottom line is, he said in verse 30 that if you eat this thing unworthily, some people fall sick, some become weak, some sleep, which means die. So if you take it worthily, what will happen? You receive strength, you receive health, and you receive longevity. So ensure you are taking it worthily. And when you take it worthily, you will not die. You will live. You will not be sick. You will be healthy. This year, hospital will not consume your weight. And of course, you receive strength. That is supernatural vitality. Glory to God. Have you discovered many believers, when you see them, they look younger than their age. In the last meeting we went, a, a, a pastor harassed me. And when he discovered 
I was almost um, twelve to ten years in senior ministry. He started apologizing to me. He said, "Boss, you are looking so young. That's why I was confused. I thought you were my junior. <laughs> Even if I'm your junior, should you oppress me?" <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you seen some of these are elders coming to share testimony? Just want to say I'm 86 years. Just want to say I'm 80 years. All of them looking agile. This is one of the secrets, communion. When you are eating this one, you will receive strength, you receive head, and you will not die. So it is anti-death therapy. By this communion today, strength will answer to you and I. One other thing the communion does is that it leaves us with something to show. The communion leaves us with something to show. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the lost dead till he comes. So the communion will always leave us with something to show. By this communion today, testimonies will come your way for you to show. The communion also gives us insights. When he gave the disciples bread to eat and communion to take, that was in Luke 24, 30, 31, their eyes were opened and they knew him. God will open your eyes and you will see. But what is in the Holy Communion? Number one is the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. The bread is the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 26, 26 to 29, Jesus said, As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood, this is my blood of New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Verse 29, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine, of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom, which means in heaven there will be communion service. And we know by that meal he ate, which was a vaccine, in verse 39, when the devil tried to tempt him and make his heart sorrowful for him to abandon the cause, to abandon his vision, he said, my, never, my, my heart is sorrowful. He said, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. It was what he took before going to Calvary that helped him to go through it. By this communion, you will go through the prayer and fasting without feeling it. In Jesus' mighty name. Look, John chapter 6, 48. I am the bread of life. <laughs> so when you eat this one, you eat life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. And that was 40 years of no feebleness. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. When you eat this one, death is swallowed up in victory. In Jesus' glorious name. This year, we will not lose any of you. This year, you will not bury anyone in your family. God will keep you, He will keep your children, He will keep your parents in the name of Jesus. There shall be no loss. Jesus' name. What is in the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ? The flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ is a divine manner. Say with me, divine manner. John 6, 68. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna and are dead. That are dead is 40 years old, no feebleness. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Please get revelation, get understanding. That's why I eat this one every day. You can eat it every day. He that eateth this one, eat a present continuous tense. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. So the communion has life. Jesus even said, I have come that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly. So when you eat his flesh, you are eating life. What are you eating? No devil will kill you. When you are traveling next time, travel with consciousness that you cannot be killed. You're unkillable. Unkillable. Accident will not kill you. Let's see something. Psalm 105 verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold 
and there was no feeble person among their tribes. Now answer me. Many of us we have schools or we run schools or you know how schools are run. Now, if you your children want the children in the school want to do it house sports, they always keep what first, first aid boss. Is it true? Some even have first aid boss in your office for a case of emergency. But how can three million people be going to a journey of four, 40 years? There was no first aid boss with them. All they needed was in the food he was giving them. They ate this same food for 40 years and there was no feebleness, no runny nose. Every woman delivered like the Hebrew woman. Everything worked well for them. Now hear this. As you partake of this meal today, you will live and not die. Every weakness is swallowed up in victory in the name of Jesus. Including weakness when you want to pray. That prayer disease, God is going to cure it by this communion. You want to pray, you sleep, saliva is pouring out. You want to read the Bible, you sleep, saliva is pouring out. But when you are watching TV, you are not weak. But it's when you are praying, you discover everything. You just say, I don't tire. That tiredness will be swallowed here today. It also empowers our insights. When you give them bread to read, their eyes were open. Look, 24, 30 to 31. Their eyes were open. So, by the eating of his flesh and blood today, your eyes will be open in Jesus' name. What is in the blood? As we conclude, the blood carries the very nature of Jesus. It carries what? The very nature of Jesus. The very nature of Jesus. John six fifty four. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So if you drink this one, you have eternal life. The Zoe, the God kind of life. The indestructible life. The molestable life. Please believe what you are hearing. The communion infuses God's nature into you. Why? The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of Jesus is his blood. The communion, the blood of Jesus Christ give, gives us supernatural defense against the assault of the wicked. Zechariah 9, 11 and 12. He said, And for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, I brought you out of the pit where there is no water. Turn you to your stronghold. So the blood of Jesus is our stronghold. It's not our weak hold. Turn you to your stronghold, O ye prisoners of hope. So today, by the communion, You'll be established. You'll be healed. You'll be delivered. Every assault of the wicked cannot come near the blood. No. They overcame him by the blood and by the words of their testimony. Revelation 12 11. So the devil knows. So by the blood you are taking today, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You will live this year 2019 and beyond as a stone. Strength will not fail you. It doesn't matter what they throw at you. Have you can you will you bother yourself throwing anything on the stone or pouring water on the stone? No matter what they throw at you this year, you will be like stone. You will not break down. You will not suffer defeat in the name of Jesus. Your strength will not fail you. Maybe somebody is tired of life, thinking that, oh, why am I still alive? <laughs> Hear me. Elijah, a great prophet of God, came to that realm. He sat on the juniper tree. Tired of life. Wanted, was asking for death to come. Is it not better to die? But when God gave him this communion from heaven, he received strength. To go in the journey that was ahead of him, 40 days and 40 nights, until he came to the mountain of the Lord. I should partake of this communion today. Strength to go on with this fasting. You will receive it. Maybe somebody was not planning to fast before. 
But your heart this one now, as you take this one now, strength to fast will come. Strength to pray will come. Strength to receive revelation from God will come. And you will not be put to shame. Rise on your feet. We are going to pray, but before we pray, I want to give opportunity to some people here. The truth is this, nobody can give you an inheritance in a house where you are not a genuine member of the family. You can't partake of anything from God if you are not a member of the household of God. My Bible told you that he that had a son had life, and he that had the son had no life. If you don't have Jesus inside you, you don't have life, you are just a zixi. And somebody is here today, say, Jesus, I turn to you. Give me light. Remember, Jesus is the light of the world. Except this light comes into you, you'll be grouping in darkness. Somebody is here today, you want to say, Jesus, I'm tired. I want to, I surrender my life to you. I don't want to keep going the way I've been going. I surrender my life to you. Please put your hand on your chest right now. You want to give your life to Jesus. Want to be born again. You want to be a child of God. Put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody maybe gave his life to Jesus someday, but you know you are no more there. You don't have peace. You don't have joy that announces his presence. As a matter of fact, things are going haywire. You want to say, Lord, I'm retrieving my step and returning back to you. When the prodigal son returned, it was glory he saw. Somebody wants to return back to glory and dignity today. Return to him, he will return to you. Put your hand on your chest also, rededicate your life to him right now. So we pray. Somebody is suffering from certain evil habits. Maybe you even made some New Year resolution on the first of the year, first of January. But right now, you know you are back to square one. Why will you continue this way? Only Jesus can help you. Turn to him now. If somebody wants to do that, please, please put your hand on your chest. Also, I pray this prayer of salvation with me. If you're among the category of prayer I mentioned, pray this way. Say, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name now in the book of life. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you for bringing me to the Father. Your grace has found me. Let your grace preserve me. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. Pray that prayer with me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, there are sincere people here. God bless you for your sincerity. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Walk to the front of the altar right now. The pastor, your blessing. Please come. Don't shy away. Tomorrow may be too late. God loves you the way you are. You are right for him. Start the year well with him. Start the 2019 year well with God. Come. 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 In case you come with a prayer request, your prayer request in a small invitation card that was given to you, please pass it to the ushers. They'll bring it also. We're going to pray here. Hallelujah. Please come. Come, come. On the way to Calvary, he went for me. He went for me. He went for me. On the way, on the way to Calvary, he went for me. Oh,
up your list of desires we're going to be praying right now and this is our prayer father quicken and strengthen me by your spirit and by the communion today to run the race of this church one day's prayer and fasting ahead as you do grant my desires father quicken and strengthen me by your spirit and by the communion today to run the race of this church one day's prayer and fasting ahead of me as you do grant me my desires go ahead and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart father in the name of jesus quicken me strengthen me by your spirit and by the communion today father help me to run the race ahead of me the race of this prayer and fasting commencing tomorrow lord i should do this grant me my desires every desire i put before you concerning the year concerning the month lord let them be granted just like you granted that daughter of yours her desires she wrote last year she wants to be married and she married lord grant my own desires strengthen me wake me by your spirit and by the communion to run the race ahead of me lord let my desires be granted you said you grant the desire of the righteous grant me my desires grant me my desires grant me my desires please if i touch you move towards my right move towards my right you are blessed 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 go towards my right you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed go towards my right you are blessed go towards my right jesus grant me my desires Azuna pakata plale Jesus ama paraga bos Enkelie Jesus apa na prana gate Jesus apa laga ba Eme pronie ge kota plale de Jesus ama pa akete prenia ga ba Pray na commit your desires to him Bana you are able to do more than I can ask or think Grant me my desires Let there be enlargement. Let there be a confirmation of your precious prayer. Hey, Ali. Lord, show me mercy. Show me her. Give me strength, famous. Let there be divine empowerment for greater works. Let there be manifestation for the gate of the Spirit. Give me all round rest. Lord, show me a token for good. Now then, I help me see it. Strength of me. Empower me. Grant my desires. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Every request that been dropped here today become a testimony. Amen. We'll hear your testimony on this altar in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, some of you, what you have written that you are holding right now, before the expiration of the day, all of them are already fulfilled. Amen. Some of you, within 24 hours, within 7 days, the testimony is already landed. Every request that has been dropped on this basket by any new convert, new first timer, I declare your desires are granted. Amen. Your prayer request in your hand right now, God will do beyond it. Amen. Oh, I decree in the name of Jesus, you will see the glory of God in the land of the living. Amen. The kind of thing you have never seen before in terms of testimony, breakthrough, favor, turn over, you are going to see it. Amen. You are going to beat records. In the name of Jesus. Whatever target I've been giving you to meet, you overmeet it. My God will enlarge your course. Congratulations. 2019 is your year. Jesus Christ. Amen. Let, let the communion see what come. The congregation will be seated. Let the communion see what come. We are going to partake of the communion right now. We are going to partake of the communion right away. Remember all you have taught, taught us concerning the communion. It's strength giving me, it's inside giving me. It neutralizes the poisons in the body. It 
is there and anti death therapy. Father, this table is blessed. As we partake of it today, partake of it as the flesh and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By it, we receive strength, we receive health, we receive all love, vitality, we receive longevity. By it, we receive strength to run the race ahead of us. And Lord, whatever you are not planted in anybody,